Oh, hi. Hey, I'm just chugging some Boone's Farm. I guess I should take the cap off for better realism. <laughs> uh, so last week I did a pens in use, and uh, we talked about... I, you know, I did a little joke, because it was April Fool's Day, about actually putting juice in my pens. And I thought, what the heck? Let's try it out. So we're going to try all the juices for real. Only, no fountain pens will be harmed in this video because I'm going to use a glass pen. Uh, I suppose you could use a uh, Noodler's uh, Boston Safety Pen, or you could use, you know, that cheapy Jin Hao you've got sitting in the bottom of your drawer, too, to do this video. So, let's take a look at how this works. Alright, so uh, if you hear any wind noise, we've got 60 mile an hour wind gusts going on outside, so you're going to hear a little wind, but... Anyway, I wanted to just follow up, so what I have here, first, I'm going to look at this Boone's Farm again, and then I'm going to dump it down the drink, or down the sink, because that was disgusting, but at $4.97 a bottle, I don't feel too bad about pouring it down the sink. Now, to write with it, I'm going to use this glass pen by Girbon. It has a nice little spirally deal here to hold the ink or whatever, and then just decorative whatever and then I have a jar of water here so I can clean it off for the next thing so let's look at oh yeah there's the carbonation I heard a, a sizzle all right so we're gonna look at some wine looks like I didn't put anything on it but I promise I did are you disappointed I was the first time I tried it um, even if you get nice red wine, uh, like the really good stuff, it doesn't go on that dark. So, disappointing. And I'm using Tomoe River paper, by the way. So then I have some fruit punch that I used last week. So I dipped in the water, by the way, but anyway, just to prove that I am actually getting this onto my pen. Ah, disappointing. So this is Welch, uh, Welch's, whoops, Fruit Punch. Yay. It looks like water. Maybe I'm making my point. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get we'll throw a couple links in here yet. I even blurped here. Then I maybe I can finally play with my Star Wars action figure that came with my drink. Except I cannot remove the toy from the dome. So what's it good for? Alright, so dip in the juice what's this orange mango juice it's actually going on I think I gotta redo it I think I wiped on a inky part of this we'll try that again let's be fair Disappointing! Yeah! And finally, grape juice. Now, if you've ever spilled some of this stuff on your clothes, you know it doesn't come out that well there, or you spill it on your furniture or whatever. So, uh... I think that's just one of those mysteries of the universe. So here's the grape juice. Nope, sorry, grape punch. Disappointing! So, I'm going to pull out one of my disappointing inks. i got to get up and get it, though. So this was one of my last ink buys uh, before I went on my ink buying moratorium. 
Bears. We'll press Sweet Honeydew. And uh, very disappointing because it was so flippin' pale it was useless. Looks good in the bottle though. So we'll dip. And I think you can immediately see the difference between this and juice. Yeah. So I think there's a lesson to be learned here. When you buy an ink, it has a much higher pigment load than any food products. Yes, food products can inspire an ink, but they cannot be an ink. And, uh, Let's just appreciate for a moment a real ink like Parker Quink, well, black, <laughs> has a much higher dye load yet. And some inks, like uh, the Noodlers, have an even higher dye, dye load yet beyond that. So, uh, a little something to think about here. So, I will photograph this when it's fully dried. I don't want to sit here and film till it's fully dried, because i got other things to do tonight. i got a busy night. <clears throat> Oh, hey there. <laughs> so, uh, I've been doing uh, a lot of Boone's Farm lately. <laughs> we, so, I did uh, did the whole filming thing. I'm looking at my inks. They're all dry now. And I will put a photo, well, link to the photo in the video description. And some of them show up. But you immediately see a difference between... <laughs> between the juices of various sorts and the really awful ink that I put on the page. Ink has a much higher dye load than a drink because drinks don't come with a dye load. The color in this is meant to evoke... Um, I'm going to stop shaking that now because I just splashed everywhere and it hissed at me. Okay, uh, where was I? <laughs> this Boone's farm is going. This Boone's farm is going to get me yet. Um, <laughs> I need another drink. <laughs> so anyway, um, food doesn't come with a dye load, really. I mean, it comes with enough dye to evoke feelings and whatever like cheddar cheese isn't actually neon yellow it's it's really white but you know it's sold as neon yellow because people just kind of think it's supposed to be that color so you know our artificial colors are a big thing in food i i suspect that this boone's farm is not naturally this color but uh it's not the dye load that you have in an ink because the ink has an extra function. The ink actually has to function as written words on a piece of paper. And uh, it needs a much higher dye load to do that. Now, ink also has some other fun things. Uh, ink has to not feather on paper. So it's got special chemicals in it to help with that. Uh, it's really helpful if ink doesn't get moldy. You might remember I had a floaty in my orange drink. <laughs> Um, we, we don't want mold growing in our ink, so it has fungicides and various other things like that in it. Uh, our ink often has lubricants of various types. So, inks are full of a lot of different ingredients besides just water. And different brands of ink, of course, have more dye load. You know, the Noodlers is infamous for having an excessive dye load to the point that a lot of people buy the Noodlers inks and immediately dilute them. So, uh... Ink is a different animal from food. Now, that doesn't mean you can't be inspired. You know, you look at the color of a glass of red wine. You know, I I have a... I'm going to mispronounce it. Bourgogne Finnish Platinum 3776, inspired by the color of wine. It's really darker than the wine, but also... If I were to turn that pen into ink, it would be too pale. So, uh, 
yeah, you can get your inspiration from foods. I've got cucumber wine on my shelf. Uh, sorry, cucumber ink. I don't have cucumber wine, sad to say. Uh, cucumber ink, which actually doesn't bear a color resemblance to cucumbers at all, but that's another story. I have blackberry ink, which actually very closely mimics the color of blackberry juice. Um, but they're not... The heavy, um, the, the real food doesn't have the heavy dye load like the ink does. And also it doesn't have the side effects. Like, um, I hate to think what Boone's Farm would actually do inside of one of my expensive pans. I, I don't know, can a Rushi finish stand up to 7.5% alcohol? I don't know. Uh, I'm never going to find out either. So, uh, I do want to just mention... JPL, who's an Australian pen reviewer who lately is, hasn't been doing so many pen reviews. He's, he's turned more into machining and stuff. But uh, he had a interesting video on using food coloring. And, you know, I'll tell you what. Food coloring is interesting because you put, like, a couple drops into your meal and that's enough. So it, food coloring is actually very concentrated dye. And he did some experiments with food coloring as ink, and he had some success. Now, these, of course, were brands of food coloring not available in the United States, so your mileage may vary. But kudos to JPL for uh, taking one for the team with, ironically, Jin Hao pens. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> I'll put the link down in the video description. But on the whole, um, yes, it's funny for a... April Fool's joke to pretend like I'm putting Boone's Farm into whatever pen I pretended I put it into. But in real life, your fountain pens want fountain pen ink or water when they're being cleaned. Maybe pen flush, although uh, I don't like to use pen flush except when I have a really bad pen that really needs help. Um, but yeah, water, fountain pen ink. Those are the magic ingredients for fountain pen. And make sure it is fountain pen ink. There are some interesting inks out there, like India ink, which will clog the heck out of your fountain pen. But it'll look good doing it. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, um, I, I hope it was interesting at least to see how the ink writes. Or the, not ink, God, I said that. Um, how the juices write, uh, just looking at them. Surprisingly, this wine does pretty well. The grape punch started well, but then kind of failed. And uh, the orange mango, when I had it contaminated by wiping it on a blue part of this cloth, did pretty well. But, you know, the orange juice by itself, eh, not so much. So, uh, anyway, it was a fun experiment. And uh, I realize now why I couldn't comment on the person who gave me this idea, because they, they contacted me via private email. So I will just say... Thank you, Swedish viewer, for the idea of doing pens and juice. It was fun. Um, I've already gotten an idea for a April Fool's for next year, so uh, we'll see how it develops. But, uh, you know, if you have ideas, it's kind of fun. Just, uh, you know, this uh, Swedish person came up with an idea, and I just thought, that's stupid. And I thought about it some more. I thought, yeah, that actually sounds kind of fun, and it was. So, uh if you have ideas for this channel, let me know, uh, either in the comments or email or whatever. So, I want to thank you for watching. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.